Welcome everyone, glad you're here. Um, this is the third of seven webinars that I am doing this summer and they are popular so, uh, and they're free. So please share if uh, you know that other people that are interested, um, they are being recorded and will get um, posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, today, I think we had over 100 registered. So that um, really shows that there is a high interest in preserving food and then uh, and pickling. So that's awesome. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items that everyone is on mute and your camera is um, turned off. And so we'll be using the chat box um, or pod today to share um, information and questions. So please use that if you're not familiar with Zoom. You can just uh, scroll down at the bottom of your screen and a toolbar should pop up. Um, click on chat and then there's a, a, an arrow that you want to change the two from panelists to um, all attendees and panelists so we so everybody can um, see what you're what you're asking or sharing. So my name is Suzanne Dreesen and I'm a University of Minnesota Extension and I specialize in food safety. I've been with uh, Extension for 23 years and I started uh, preserving food um, when I was about eight, probably younger than that. I grew up in a, in, uh, on a farm near Canby, Minnesota in, in the southwest part of the state and we had a big family. We had 15 uh, moths to feed so we had a big garden, uh, you know, raised chickens, did all of that. And um, if we preserved it, we, we did. And today I uh, have my own little backyard garden. I live in St. Cloud, Minnesota, and I preserve um, all kinds of things. Uh, freeze things, canned things, dry things, but pickling, um, this year already I uh, have made refrigerator pickles. Uh, refrigerator, refrigerator pickled red onions and uh, pickled spicy jaranara that's that I like an Italian little spice mix and then um, home canned uh, jelly beans that I have with me today. So preserving is a great way um, to produce or to preserve your garden and enjoy that summer taste all year long. Um, pickling will be our topic, topic today and pickling is just not for cucumbers anymore and we'll talk more about other foods that you can pickle and enjoy. We'll talk about how pickling um, preserves food and what ingredients are needed um, to make that happen and the processes involved in preserving um, and pickling safely. We'll talk about your equipment that you need what are those um, ingredients and we'll also look at um, you know those scientific methods for making and processing pickled products and then we'll spend some time at the end looking at some troubleshooting um, what went wrong and why and then resources for you to access um, for those safe re recipes and methods. What is pickling? Uh, pickling is the process of preserving by extending the shelf life. And we do that by either an anaerobic um, fermentation, so we put um, a product in a brine, or we immerse it in a vinegar brine. And the amount of acid added or produced is very important to the safety of the product and to get that right pickle flavor, that tangy flavor that we all love in pickled products. There are several types of pickled products and classifications of pickles. Those include fermented, fresh or quick pack, fruit pickles, relishes, and refrigerator products like uh, pickled fish or pickled eggs and refrigerated pickles or other veggies. So let's look at each of these types of products. Fermented pickles or brined pickles, they're sometimes called. They undergo a curing process for four to six weeks, which is um, creates a fermentative fermentative bacteria that produces acids, acids necessary for the preservation process. Um, other fruits and vegetables may be fermented, such as using cabbage to produce sauerkraut, or a variety of vegetables to produce kimchi, or a variety, or, or um, apples to make a fermented chutney. 
but we'll cover the specifics of fermentation. So if you were here today to learn about fermentation, I'm not going to be covering that today. Um, so go ahead and hop off if you want. But um, I do have a firm, uh, webinar coming up on fermentation on September 29th. Then there's fresh pack, or sometimes they're called quick pack process pickles, like whole cucumber dills, cross-cut cucumber slices, bread and butter pickles, and other vegetables like zucchini or dilly beans. Um, they're made by adding an acid such as vinegar and not by that natural fermentation of the vegetable. The tart flavor of these easily prepared products is due to the acidic acid, acetic acid in the vinegar. Um, we'll focus on that fresh um, pickle process mainly today. Fruit pickles are also made by that fresh pack or quick pack process using whole or sliced fruits and simmered in spicy sweet sour syrup, peaches, pears, uh, ap spiced crab apples. I remember we made those when I was growing up are just, you know, some of the fruits that can be pickled. And relishes uh, are prepared from fruits and vegetables. And what's nice about relishes, a lot of times it's a combination of things. So there's a corn relish that also has peppers in it. Um, there's a variety of, um, of cucumber relishes that have different ingredients in it as well too. But it's, it's, and then there's an end of the garden relish too that you basically can take a lot of um, things from your garden and, and make a nice relish out, out of it. So it works out really well. But um, usually what you're doing there is you're cooking down the product and then you add vinegar as the preservative. There's a chutney, which is a relish type condiment. And well, I think a lot of times think of it as more of a fruit, but it can also be made from vegetables. It has seasonings or vinegar in it. Um, there's a newer recipes that use uh, green and ripe tomatoes, and there's other vegetables chutney recipes as well. And then refrigerator pickled products are stored in the refrigerator with a sweet or sour brine. Um, since the bacteria Listeria monocytogenes can grow in acidic refrigerated um, pickles. There is a food safety risk with um, refrigerated pickles. A listeria can cause a serious foodborne illness for in individuals with compromised immune systems. So homemade um, refrigerated pickle products do have a short shelf life and should be eaten within one month of making them. Uh, the University of Illinois Extension has a recipe for non-traditional sweet freezer pickles um, that I've tried and I like a lot. And so if your canning's not your, your thing and you want to keep things longer than a month in your refrigerator, that might be the way to go. Um, and they store really well up to a year. You can search extension.org for pickled product recipes. So uh, if you wouldn't mind in the chat, um, what is your favorite type of pickled product to make and eat? Uh, if you can talk about the type that we just reviewed, and then um, what, what, what kind. So for me, refrigerator pickled red onions have been a popular thing in our house. And then Lisa, if you want to share what's coming in, that'd be awesome. You bet. We've got a couple of responses. Uh, Debbie says, uh, Kamichi. Uh, we've got hot dilly beans from... Rebecca, um, butter pickles. Uh, someone says they've never pickled before. Uh, pickled red beets. Um, another dilly beans. Pickled banana peppers. Sweetened dill pickle relish. Beet pickles beans. Lots of variety. Any yes, tons of variety. Yeah, any pickled fish or fruit? Pickled. I haven't seen any yeah, yet. I'm just curious. Awesome. Good. Well, thanks everyone for sharing. Appreciate that. No matter what type of pickled product you make, uh, safe food handling practices are really critical to prevent uh, foodborne illness that are, is associated with uh, unsafe home canning procedures. So we want to always first start with our research tested recipe, and you probably will hear me say that more than once, um, and methods uh, recommended by the USDA or uh, Minnesota or other state 
extension resources of your canning companies like Ball, Kerr, or Presto are, are also reputable sources because they do their own research and, and development. So I always get asked like, why can't you just make up a canning recipe? And here's why. Because uh, safe home canning recipes are developed by researchers who repeat that entire um, recipe process of preparation and the canning steps um, over and over to get that accurate data. And they actually put microorganisms into the jars to make sure that that processing time that we do what we can is sufficient to destroy those microorganisms. The other thing to look um, at when you're selecting a recipe is the, the date of the source. And it should be 1994 or beyond or newer. And um, because times and, and recipes were updated in the 1980s and the research was released in 1994. So using recipes from canning pub publications or cookbooks or those old family recipes uh, dated before 1994 can be under processed. And many of those old pickling recipes that are passed on from generation to generation may not be um, research-based or on the latest science. In addition, um, there are lots of recipes, pickling recipes on blogs, the internet, and there's videos on the internet. Um, just make sure that they reference research-based tested uh, recipes or don't use them. Uh, in addition, never alter um, tested recipes or make up your own recipe. Uh, this is really, really important if you are, um, if you'll be canning the product for, for pantry storage. If you're going to keep it in the refrigerator, you have a little more leeway, but not if you're going to can it. Changing or altering ingredients may make the food unsafe. And then finally, select a tested recipe that is specifically designed for the product you want to pickle. So recipes are not, and methods are not interchangeable. So making sure if you want to do um, pickled ginger, somebody wanted to do that, make sure that it's a recipe for pickled ginger and not for pickled green beans. And then always follow the directions carefully for a safe, high quality product. And then pickling food safely, we'll talk a little bit about um, selecting the produce. Um, home canning recipes and methods are, are tested using best quality ingredients. Always use fresh produce as at its peak ripeness and quality free of bruises, um, cracks, disease, or insect damage. Um, diseased or damaged produce may actually harbor pathogens. The, the processing time may not be enough to kill extra pathogens contained in that damaged or diseased produce. So don't use produce that um, contain mold either. Um, while that heat processing and the canning processing will destroy the mold spores, but not the off flavor that was already, that mold already developed in that product. So just remember that just one unsafe cucumber or garlic clove can put that whole batch at risk. Food safety includes cleaning produce well before use. Make sure that you rinse all produce and fresh herbs under running tap water before preparing it for pickling. Um, that includes that garlic and onion too. Uh, use clean hands, a clean cloth or a uh, clean produce brush to really get in there and scrub um, that produce really well, um, especially if it has a rind or um, firm skin like cucumbers and beets. You want to make sure that you're also washing it around that um, those stem scars as well too, um, the the part that you actually pick or harvest um, from the vine. So really get in there because um, soil can be trapped in um, around that um, stem, and so any soil left can actually be a source of bacteria, which can cause that pickled product to be be um, soft. And then a clean and sanitary kitchen is critical. Um, remember, you're working in a small processing factory when you are preserving. Um, it's critical to prevent introductions of harmful pathogens into your products. So start with clean sinks and, and equipment, um, making sure you're washing your hands well before um, 
and often during the process. And finally, avoid preserving when you're sick, especially with symptoms of foodborne illness like diarrhea and or vomiting, which are always a foodborne disease risk to the food and to others. In this section, we'll move on to and talk about ingredients um, that are needed to make a tasty, fresh, practical product. So we're gonna start with cucumbers because when you registered, there's a lot of interest in um, preserving and pickling cucumbers so that they're not soft and, and mushy tasting. So we're gonna talk about um, cucumbers for a moment. And um, so just remember that the, uh, the variety in, of cucumbers and the length of time from harvest, harvest to pickling will matter in the qual and quality of the product. So making sure that you're using um, pickling cucumbers, which are, have a thinner skin, making it easier for the vinegar and salt to enter the flesh to preserve the cucumber. Uh, University of Minnesota um, winners from the Master Gardener seed trials over the last several decades include uh, Chicago pickling, Cool Breeze, and Little Leaf. Other common pickling varieties include pickle bush, straight eight, or old gherkins. Uh, don't use table or slicing salad or wax type varieties as they have skins that are um, waxy and too thick and can inhibit the brine absorption, at, um, affecting the safety of the product as well and definitely the quality. You wanna select slim, dark green cucumbers with prickly bumps on the skin about two inches long for gherkins and five inches for dills and no more than two inches around um, as bigger cucumbers, again, will be soft and um, the penetration of that vinegar brine, it's difficult because it's too big. And then regarding freshness, uh, you will we'll get the crispest pickle if you preserve pickles within two hours uh, of picking them or harvesting them. I know that's a little tough, but um, that's, that's going to give you the best product. Um, when that's not possible, you need to make sure that they're refrigerated immediately after picking because cucumbers will really lose moisture quickly. Even one day at room temperature may lead to a hollow centered or shriveled pickle. Crispus can also be lost if stored longer than 24 hours in the refrigerator from harvest to pickling. So that's kind of the rule of thumb. You always, you know, for any food or vegetable when you're preserving, try to do it within 24 hours of harvesting it. And, and vegetables will become soft as their pectin structure changes due to um, longer storage and that microbial activity. And once a vegetable becomes soft, it's really hard to make it firm again. There are lots of vegetables from your garden that you can pickle. Uh, the great source for recipes is the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Um, they have instructions and recipes from asparagus to zucchini pickles, fruit pickles, relishes, um, low um, so sodium, reduced sodium. I know that was an issue for some people registered today. Um, no sugar recipes. So. They, uh, they do all the research and they're out of the University of Georgia. So that's the National Center for Home Food Preservation. The level of acidity in a pickled product is important to its safety as well as to the texture and the taste of the product. So again, it's um, for safety and for best quality. In pickling, you'll usually in fresh pack pickling, you'll add an acid like vinegar to a low acid product like cucumbers, beets, or beans to change the acidity to a safe level. Again, this prevents the growth of bacteria responsible for causing botulism if, um, that cannot grow in an acidic environment. So most current recipes will call for a brine ratio of one part water to one part vinegar. Never alter the proportion of vinegar, food, or water. Doing so may make, an, make it an unsafe product. So we'll talk a little bit about brine. 
Uh, in pickling, a uh, sweet or sour brine is created and poured over the cucumbers or the pickled um, vegetable before processing in a canner or storing in the refrigerator. Vinegar and water are the main ingredients with added salt, spices, and sometimes sugar. Uh, use standard 5% um, vinegar with acidity level of 5%, a white or cider vinegar as indicated in your recipe. But when you're out shopping for vinegar, make sure you're looking at the label when you buy vinegar. Um, I was at the store the other day and I saw a, a brand of vinegar that stated contains up to 5% um, acidity. So you want that label to say 5% acidity, not up to, I need 5%. Um, there are other um, vinegars on the market that only have three or four percent. So making sure you look look at that label because that will change the safety and the quality of your pickle. And then also do not use um, homemade vinegar, which we don't know what the acidity level is. The water um, you use can affect the final product um, quality wise. Usually. A lot of times it's like, well, what was your water? And we want to um, use soft water, distilled or filtered water uh, when possible for the best um, product. And it'll help prevent um, the brine from being cloudy as well. The hard water can interfere with the formation of acid and prevent pickles from curing properly. A water with above average calcium content can shrivel your pickles and iron compounds can make them darker than normal. Chlorine in our city water supplies does not negatively impact the quality of the final product. To soften hard water, uh, you can boil for four, 15 minutes, then you let it stand uh, undisturbed for 24 hours, then you discard the sediment, the sediment um, on the bottom, and then right before use, you will add a one tablespoon of vinegar per gallon of water. Using pickling or canning salt without um, additives is needed to avoid a cloudy brine. In addition, the flavor of salt um, helps draw out the water of the vegetable, allowing it to be replaced with the brine. So that's kind of the role of salt. And then if your uh, recipe calls for any spices, um, buy fresh uh, spices at the beginning of each pickling season because spices do lose um, their flavor during storage quickly. Uh, fresh whole spices are often the, will give you the best quality and flavor of a product. Uh, if your recipe calls for sugar, um, use white granulated sugar and it, uh, it's often um, added in a brine to improve flavor and also texture. I see I have a typo there. Other ingredients, some recipes will add the addition of garlic or um, dill. And again, um, don't if your recipe doesn't, find one that does if you want garlic or dill. Again, you um, not adding extra ingredients is important if, it's, if the recipe doesn't call for it. Um, when you add the dill or garlic, it's, it's often added directly to the jars before you um, add the brine to the to the product in the jar. So I have a picture here of um, picture here of the a dill that I got um, head from, that I got from my garden, and you can also um, buy it in the produce section, or also um, many farmers markets will have a dill as well. And you actually use that whole head um, and not just a sprig or two. So you use a whole head. And usually it's one head per pint or one and a half heads per quart of pickled product. And or you can sub one tablespoon of dill C for one dill head. If you, um, this happens to me a lot, my um, dill is usually ready before I am, before my cucumbers are. So uh, you can go ahead and freeze your dill uh, in an airtight container. Um, it will maybe have a 
slightly different flavor change, but it will still be fine to use. And making sure that the dill you're using is um, bright green and not brown. Um, again, that will change the, the flavor. So making sure it's clean, fresh, and insect free as well. And then regarding garlic, uh, again, only use the amount indicated in your recipe because adding more garlic or other low acid foods like hot peppers can make the product unsafe. Again, um, pickling and canning is not, uh, not cooking. So I know it's tempting like, oh, it'd be really good to, I want to spice this up. I'm going to add some hot peppers to that. And the, um, find a recipe that is designed for and has um, hot peppers in it if you want to spice it up. Or a, an, a safer option is you can always add dried um, red um, chili peppers that um, is not going to change the acidity level. And then some preparation tips um, for cucumbers. You want to remove the um, 1 16th inch from that blossom end. Um, and the reason for that is that um, enzymes are produced um, and in, in that blossom end, um, that's what helps you know, grow the cucumber and that continues after you harvest the cucumber. So you wanna um, cut that off and stop that enzyme, enzyme production. And then when you're packing your pickles, you wanna allow sufficient room for the pickling solution to surround each piece um, so that there's room for um, the, it to um, absorb into the pickle. And then um, when you make your pickling brine, we'll talk more about that, um, the ingredients that go into that, but when you make your pickling brine, um, do it according to recipe uh, and make sure that you heat, um, you're heated on the stove, just bring it to boiling um, just before you need it. You don't want to overcook your brine because overcooking can actually cha change um, the acid level uh, and lose its ability to keep the, those pickles um, safely, safely stored. So we're going to now jump on into some firming agents because there was a lot of questions about this. Um, everybody wants that crisp pickle. Um, but if you're using an up-to-date recipe, tested recipe, fresh quality produce, and that you remove that blossom end, um, firming agents are usually unnecessary. Um, but however, some home canners do like to use them um, when they do make pickles. So we'll review some of those um, common um, things, firming agents that are available for you to use in home pickling. So we'll start with uh, calcium hydroxide which is also known as pickling lime. And um, other names are hydrated lime, uh, slack lime, or kale in Spanish. So. The thing about using um, pickling lime is that follow the directions closely. Um, there are products widely available on, um, you know, on the internet or in stores. Um, Mrs. Wages here, as the picture shows, makes, makes a brand. Um, and they promote their um, product for pickling cucumbers the old fashioned way for extra cr crispness and flavor. They also have recipes for cucumber lime, um, pickles, pickled green tomatoes, and water, rind, and citron pickles. When you're using pickling lime, uh, make sure that it's, um, it is food grade and it's called pickling lime. It's not um, agriculture or burnt lime. And you'll um, use the lime in the initial soak for 12 to 24 hours before pickling them. Um, lime is added at the rate of no more than two tablespoons per gallon of water in that soaking solution. Excess lime must be removed as the pickling lime is highly basic, which is non-acidic and can increase the possibility of botulism in home can products. So after the initial soak, uh, you drain, rinse, and then re-soak the cucumbers in fresh water for one hour. Then you rinse and you repeat that fresh water soak and rinsing step two more times. So you're doing that a total of three times. 
uh, if used incorrectly, lime can be unsafe. And when you're using lime, um, make sure you're not using aluminum containers for soaking as that lime can pit the aluminum um, causing it to soak into the cucumbers and making them unsafe to consume. The rinsing process is again, very, very important because excess lime absorbed by the cucumbers can make the pickle unsafe to eat and increase the risk of botulism. If you're using um, pickling lime, there are some safety guidelines as well. Make sure that you're handling it carefully, following the manufacturer instructions for safe handling, um, making sure that um, you're not inhaling or exposing that lime um, dust to your eyes or breathing it in, and making sure that you're not consuming the food grade lime um, straight. It's a, again, very uh, strong base solution and may be harmful. Accidental uh, ingestion can cause burns of the throat and esophagus. Calcium chloride is a safer alternative for pickle, to pickling lime. Um, this generic firming agent is commonly used in the pickling and candy, canning industry. Um, in recent years, it's become available for home canners and you can find it um, where you find your canning supplies, but a couple of brands are Pickle Crisp by Ball or Extra Crunch by Mrs. Wages. Uh, these products will result um, with the same great taste and crispness of lime, but they um, does not have that um, hydroxide compound of lime and therefore does not lower the acidity level of the pickled food or pose a food safety risk. A small amount is added to each jar of pickles before sealing the jar with a lid. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's directions for use. Calcium chloride can also improve the texture of canned apples, um, pears, and peaches. Or it can you be used to keep that whole canned tomatoes um, together. Calcium chloride may leave a little bit of a salty taste, but does not add any extra sodium. These products have an indefinite shelf life, but will clump and become hard when exposed to humidity. So it's important to keep them in a dry storage condition. Uh, commercial uh, canners and food entrepreneurs use calcium chloride as an alternative to removing that blossom end. Grape leaves are, is another thing that you'll see in some recipe, recipe books. Um, that does contain, grape leaves do contain um, tannins that inhibit that enzyme um, that do make our pickles soft. But again, cutting off that blossom end, one sixteenth of an inch, uh, will have that same effect as grape leaves. Alm is a compound that is used in old recipes. Um, that's a clue that your recipe is probably outdated if it's, called, if it's still calling for alm. Um, but it was used to make um, pickles crisp. It's no longer recommended by the Food and Drug Administration and current science-based uh, recipes will no longer have it included. Um, if ingested in lar large quantities, it can produce nausea and severe uh, distress with the digestive system. Probably one of the simplest methods of firming pickles is to use, an ice so uh, to use ice. You can soak cucumbers or other vegetables in ice water or layer with crushed ice for four to five hours before pickling. Sometimes this step is combined with a salt solution as indicated by the recipe. So we'll take a little break here and I'll address some questions that came up when you did register. And if you have some questions that you want to add to the chat, we'll take a few of those um, during this time as well. So one of the questions that came up was, uh, what is the best time of day to pick cucumbers and vegetables for pickling? So the time of day you pick or harvest vegetables um, does affect the taste and the quality. So it's recommended that you pick garden vegetables in, in the cooler parts of the day before 9 a.m. or after 5 p.m. Avoid picking any vegetables during the hot hours because the heat of the day will turn them limp and they become soft very quickly during storage. 
Vegetables harvested in the morning generally are sweeter, crisper, and juicier than those picked at other times. As they rest in the garden overnight, vegetables replenish the moisture lost during the day. Uh, sweeter vegetal, vegetables use the nighttime hours to make sugars from the starches they produce during the day. Another question was, are sun pickles a safe? And sun pickles are not considered a safe way to, to make pickles. The temperatures inside the jar that are sitting in full summer sun will kill the, e the yeast and will not um, properly cure or ferment them well. Are pickle products good for you? Good question. Well, um, <clears throat> like most vegetables, pickle products are usually fat-free. Uh, they also have a high concentration of vitamins. This is in the fresh packed pickles. Um, vitamins and minerals because of the salty brine draws out the water from the pickles. Pickle products are sources of vitamin C, A, potassium, and calcium. Uh, and fermented varieties may improve gut health, health and um, help with digestion. One drawback of um, pickled products, however, is sodium, the sodium content. But again, the good news is that there are reduced sodium tested recipes out there that you can find. Lisa, do we have any other questions in the chat we can take? Yep, I'll go through and pick out a few of these here. Um, someone asked, they have a, an heirloom family recipe for zucchini. No one has ever had a problem, but how do I find out if it's safe? Excellent, yes. So for those heirloom recipes, what I would recommend you do is compare it to one that's um, a current research tested recipe. So compare it for the amount of vinegar to water solution. Is it a one-to-one? -one? Um, and then the processing time as well too. So compare those are really important. Uh, someone asked, will adding different herbs and spices alter the safety or only if you change the acid related ingredients like vinegar, et cetera? Great question, yes. So um, there's always exceptions to the, the rules, right? So um, adding like adding extra low acid foods, so um, the garlic, um, and uh, dill can affect, but um, other things like um, you could add extra sugar, that's not gonna affect the acidity level. Um, you can, like I said, dried um, pepper flakes, those um, you can add more of, um, those aren't going to affect the acidity level. So there's um, a lot of times those dried, dried um, spices uh, or herbs, um, you have a little more wiggle room with. Do you have any suggestions where people can find uh, seeds or plants of the recommended pickling varieties for cucumbers? Gosh, um, I think we have a couple of master gardeners on the call today. So I uh, invite you to jump in and share your thoughts about that in the, or anyone else on the call today, where, where do you get your seeds? And then someone asked, when I pickled cucumbers before, and if they're not packed very tight, they float. Any suggestions how to avoid this? Right, yes. Um, so you'll get that because you're packing them raw. Um, and there's a lot of air in our fruits and vegetables. So, um, so you will have that. Um, that was a newer recommendation that I, uh, as I was researching this, um, that I came across um, from some other, another extension resource um, in another state. So I was always taught <laughs> to pack them tightly, but um, I guess, you know, as I think about it, it does make sense that you have to have plume around it so it can absorb that brine, but usually the brine is absorbed um, <clears throat> Yes, yeah, absorbed different ways during the, the heating process and, and as it cures. So, so um, keeping them from floating, again, if other people have ideas about that, um, you, you do want to put them in tight, but um, just not like, you know, sometimes my mom would always say, well, add an extra one. And it's like, then it was just like pushing it in there. So, so um, there will, as it, as it heats up, um, 
in the canning process, um, you know, it will um, through through that um, motion be able to circulate it. But but um, you know, I know floating floating can be an issue. And then just a verification question. Um, someone said that adding, I like the lime adds a lot of work and time. Uh, did you say it's not important if fresh ingredients and if the blossom end is removed? Correct, yeah, lime is not um, not critical, probably not the safest to use, um, you know, but yeah, so it, if you're using fresh ingredients uh, and usually a one-to-one -one vinegar to brine um, ratio and um, what was the other one? Cutting off the, the um, blossom end. That'll do the same thing. And the, again, the freshness of, the, of your product. That has a lot to do with it as well. And then one more quick question. Uh, someone asked, a friend can open her canning lids with her fingers and wants oh, to know if that's an indication that they're not sealed correctly. Yes, that would be. Yes, so something happened. Um, sometimes they'll seal um, after the canning process and before you seal them. And then when you go to take um, take the jar out, something happened. Um, you know, the, it wasn't processed right or something happened and it comes on seal. And that might be the lid failure um, from the, the lid companies. But um, most of the time it's an error that happened um, during the processing or making of the product. <clears throat> but that would be a non-safe product to use if, if you can get the lid off. You should always, when you remove the lid, you should hear that vacuum whoosh come out. All right. Thanks, Lisa. We'll um, get to more questions um, at, <clears throat> as we go along here. So thank you. Great questions, everyone. I'm glad you're still hanging in there. It's hard to do these webinars because I don't see you. I'm used to being in front of people and talking. So now we'll talk about uh, canning those pickled products, uh, heat processing. Those uh, filled jars of packed um, pickle products will destroy any acid tolerant bacteria and spoilage microorganisms like our yeast and molds. Uh, you can use a pasteurization our boiling water canning um, process is usually uh, used for pickled products. Your uh, recipe will indicate which one to use. Uh, air is driven out of the jar during that heating process and forms an airtight seal uh, during that um, cooling process. That tight seal will protect the food inside from um, contamination from the environment. And then it makes that food safe that you can store it um, in your pantry or, or at room temperature. So to can your pickled product, you'll need a canner or a stock pot um, that works with your stove and making sure that stock pot or the canner is tall enough to fit your uh, pint or quart jars. Uh, a canner or a pot with a flat, um, smooth bottom is needed if, you're, if you have an electric or a flat top stove because you need that um, consistent um, contact to get the um, uniform heat throughout um, as you're canning. You'll also need a rack that keeps jars from touching the bottom of the canner and that will help prevent jars from breaking. You will also need um, clean canning jars that are free of chips and cracks and a lid system. A two-piece metal lid and screw band system is most commonly used in home canning today, but there are others out there. Um, mason jars may be reused, but you should always use new lids to obtain a proper seal. Um, I have a picture here of a canning toolkit. Uh, it's usually inexpensive, around $20 or so, and it comes with convenient canning tools like a jar lifter, which will help um, move that filled jar in and out of your canner. And a funnel or jar filler um, is helpful um, to fill your jars so it doesn't spill all over. A bubble furrier and a headspace measuring tool is um, the green skinny thing in the picture. 
and um, that will help. We'll talk about how to free bub bubbles and the process in a minute. And um, you'll also need a timer and a standard standard kitchen tools like uh, knives, colanders, and those kind of things. You want to use clean equipment, so be sure to wash stored canning jars, equipment, um, lids, and screw bands before use in hot, soapy water. Uh, rinse well with uh, clean water and clean, clear water to remove any soap residue. And it's no longer necessary to prevent to preheat canning metal lids, the little metal lids. Um, in um, 1969, manufacturers switched to using um, instead of rubber, uh, and that's why we preheated it to soften the rubber. But they switched it. The ingredients is a plastisol now. And um, that does not require, require softening. In fact, um, boiling them prior to use can interfere with uh, um, them sealing properly. So that saves you a step. You don't have to heat your lids anymore. Uh, you want to preheat jars and water. So you're gonna submerge clean, empty canning jars in enough water to cover them. So in a large stock pot, or I just use my boiling water canner uh, if you are filling the jars with raw food, which is called raw pap, uh, you'll preheat your water in jars to 140 degrees. If you're filling the jars with hot food, you'll heat the jars and water to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, oops, jumping around here, sorry about that. And you want to um, monitor the temperature of that water with a thermometer and then verify um, yeah, verify with a with a, a food thermometer works well. Um, Preheating jars, just know that it's very important step as the processing time is calculated by using hot jars and the method of fill. So when canning, uh, we pack jars in two different ways. Uh, it's called a hot or, um, or a raw pack are the two methods that are most commonly used. Um, jar and that's also known as the style of pack so if you're new to canning that's the term we use in, can, um, in canning hot packing means that that um, that you heat the food to boiling and then you pack the hot food and its liquid into the jar so on the um, left you'll see a picture of relish so I heated that on the stove and then I pack it into the jars hot um, hot pack is best for most foods um, but not for pickling um, for, you know, relishes work well, um, and also on um, spiced apples, I, I think we preheat, yeah, we preheat um, pickled beets as well, too. But um, pickles and um, beans, they're best if they're packed raw. I mean, otherwise we heat them up and then we heat them again, um, it, it, they will get soft. Let's see. The re the, somebody did ask about floating though. Um, if you do have an option, and again, usually you don't with pickling um, because of all that air in our product, um, in our fruit and vegetables, um, if we can hot pack things, I know we, there's people that are doing other canning. If your recipe calls for raw or hot, um, hot is preferred because it will help drive out that air before you pack it in the jar and you will have less floating. Let's see, anything else here? Um, just know that the processing times may be longer for uh, the cold pack or raw pack style than the hot pack style. And, but make sure again, using whatever methods indicated in your um, recipe. And then when we're ready to fill the jars, um, when you remove, only remove one jar from the canner at a time, Again, um, processing time is calculated using hot jars and the method of fill. So remove the preheated jar from the canner, drain the water back into the canner, and fill the jar um, with product using the jar lifter or funnel. To, um, and then you're going to fill it with your brine to the correct head space, uh, which is um, the unfilled space or the gap from that um, brine or the food um, to the top of the jar. And for fruits, um, pickled fruits, vegetables, relishes, you're going to leave a half inch headspace. Now, headspace is really important. Uh, too little headspace 
uh, may force food under the lid in, into that sealing compound. Um, and seeds can get caught there as well too. And you, you might not get a nice tight vacuum seal. And then too much headspace, where you leave too much room, the um, processing time may not be long enough to drive out all that extra air and it will cause the food to discolor and result in a lower and weaker seal. And then after you fill the jar with the um, product and the brine and pickling, um, you want to then take a spatula or a bubble freer or a plastic knife and go in um, each jar and then move it around the jar. Um, and you want to remove any extra air bubbles that got caught or trapped in there while you were filling, filling the jar. Uh, don't use metal, um, a metal knife or it can, because it can scratch um, the glass and then it can weaken it and cause it to break during processing. And then after you um, remove that, those bubbles, you'll see that um, you may see that you need to add more liquid um, because, and so that's called adjusting head space. Um, so you might have to add more brine so that it's at that half inch. And then um, this is an important step after you fill your jar, you wanna make sure that you're um, wiping your jars so you take a uh, wet paper towel or a wet clean cloth and wipe it around the rim of the jar. And then I also um, make sure that I wipe around the food band threads as well too. Um, any food or liquid residue left on that um, rim can interfere with the sealing process. And then if you're using the two, um, the metal lid and screw band, band um, system, you're going to place the lid on, on the center of the jar, and then you're going to put on the screw band. And the screw band, um, you'll tighten with, until you just feel resistance. So tighten until you feel resistance, and it's, when it stops turning, um, just stop. Don't over tighten it because that will interfere with air being able to um, get out. It's a one-way valve system. Um, from the jar and you won't get a nice tight seal and your lid can actually buckle if it's too tight. So heat processing filled jars of fresh packed pickle products will destroy acid tolerant uh, bacteria and spoilage bacteria again like yeast and molds. So we're going to um, heat process by uh, either pasteurization or boiling canning and uh, that will be indicated in your um, in your recipe. So steam canners are an option for acidic foods and um, pickling um, does make that food acidic. So uh, steam canners are on the market um, today and we got research um, that they're okay to use. Um, that was research by the University of Wisconsin. They tested um, steam canners and, with um, products and um, in 2015 uh, recommendations came out for that, that they're safe for high acid foods. Um, the thing about this is to make sure um, pickles not a problem because they have a, usually a shorter processing time, but that um, you're using USDA um, boiling water um, processing times um, of 45 minutes or less. Those jars again need to be preheated and you're going to vent the canner um, until you see, a, see steam coming out. Um, in a full column before you start your processing time. And then you never want to um, open the lid during the processing time. If you're interested in steam canners, you can find out more information from um, guidelines for using um, atmospheric steam canners by the University of Wisconsin. Uh, pressure canning pickle products is not an option for pickle products. The high heat will soften those pickle products and um, you'll definitely lose uh, their crunch. So you'll never see um, pressure canning as an option. Um, you can though use the pressure canner um, as a boiling water canner, but you don't lock the lid in place. So we'll just run through the boiling water canning steps uh, to process your um, pickles using the boiling water. Um, remember you're gonna preheat your water 
um, to 140 for raw pack and 180 for hot pack. And in this case, pickling most of the time is raw pack unless you're making a hot relish and it'd be 180, or, um, 180 for hot pack, 140 for raw pack. So then you're going to um, add your filled jars that are filled with your um, pickled product and your brine and, uh, and capped. Then you'll um, cover the jars with one to two inches of hot water and then cover the pot with your lid, turn the heat on high, and then you're gonna start um, your processing time when that water um, comes to a full ro rolling boil. When um, it's um, boiling, then you can um, again set your timer. And then when your timer goes off, you're going to remove your lid and, and um, to stop the heat and, or, and turn off your burner. And then you're going to just let it be in the canner for five minutes to just kind of um, calm down and um, it'll prevent the, it from uh, the product from boiling over. And um, let's see, dill pickles are usually uh, 15 minutes for pints and 20 minutes for quarts. And again, um, when you're um, selecting your times, be sure that you're matching it to your um, altitude. In Minnesota, uh, you're gonna choose um, times for altitudes of between 1,001 and 2,000 feet. Um, in higher elevations, your, your processing time is gonna be longer. So um, make sure that you're matching your elevation to the, or your processing time to match your elevation. And then your recipe may give you an option um, to use the low temperature pasteurization uh, um, process, and that will actually produce a crisper product. But, but again, your recipe will uh, indicate whether you can use it or not. Uh, you do have to carefully manage and monitor the time and temperature to uh, avoid possible spoilage. Uh, only use this again if it's indicated in your recipe. So in um, using this, you'll preheat your water just to 120 to 140 degrees. When you fill your jars of cucumbers with brine, it's not gonna be boiling. Uh, you want your brine just to be at 165 to 180 degrees, and then you're going to cap your jars, uh, add your filled jars to the canner, and then you'll uh, cover with that one to two inch, um, inches of hot water. And then you're going to um, heat your water to 180 degrees, your canning water to 180 degrees. And then you wanna maintain 180 degrees for 30 minutes. Um, and any um, temperature higher than 185 may uh, again cause those pickles to get soft. So then once 30 minutes are up, you're going to remove your lid from the canner and then again let it rest for five minutes before you take it out of the canner. And then when you're ready to unload the canner, uh, use a jar lifter shown in the photo on the left um, and you remove one jar at a time. You always want to make sure that jars are upright in one straight motion. Don't tilt or tip them um, because that could actually break the seal doing that. Then when you're gonna um, set them on a um, padded towel or a cloth or something. And um, again, you want to allow one inch between jars and, and don't cover it. Some people like to cover it up and you don't wanna do that because you want air movement and circulation to cool that, cool those down. Now your screw bands are gonna probably um, become loose during the canning process, that's fine. Um, don't retighten them, don't touch anything, just leave them be, um, let them cool for 12 to 24 hours. And then we'll move on to storing and using pickled products. So um, after the jars have cooled for your 12 to 24 hours, you have uh, three ways to check to make sure that the, um, that the uh, jar is sealed. Um, one is you can press down on it and it, it, it shouldn't make a click or a noise. So press down in the middle of the um, middle of the jar and it shouldn't make a noise. Um, you can also, second option is tap the bottom of the jar and it should make a nice clangy sound like that, a high pitched sound. 
If it's um, a dull sound, then it's not sealed properly. And then the other thing is that you can hold it at eye level. You should see it in to be um, concave. If it's uh, straight um, across or bulging, that means it's not um, sealed. And you can um, refrigerate any unsealed product, treat them like an unopened product, and um, use those in, in, in a few weeks. Um, let's see. Uh, the other thing I will do is I make sure after um, that I, I tug on the lid a little bit to make sure it's on there securely and tightly. And then another important thing before you put those in your pantry to store is take a nice, uh, take a wet soapy, soapy cloth and wipe the um, top ring and then make sure you're getting any residue off of the jar and the um, thread bands too because um, any residue will mold during storage. And then I dry it with a clean towel and before I put it away. And then you always want to put a date on your product and what it is. And then practice first in, first out. So what you can last year, move to the front. Um, so you're using old product first. And you should store in a cool, dry place between uh, 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you never want to store uh, canned home jars above 95 degrees because heat is really damaging to the quality and nutrients in um, home canned products. The risk of spoilage really jumps sharply at uh, those high storage temperatures above 95 degrees. So making sure you're not storing your hot pipes, a range, a furnace, um, or an uninsulated attic, or in direct sunlight either. The so, uh, sunlight can actually cause color changes and nutrient losses in foods, uh, in canned foods. And then the damp, you want it dry because dampness can um, corrode metal uh, and actually break the seals and then allow recontamination or spoilage of the food. And then um, everyone wants to know, when can I eat those things? <laughs> um, and usually you want to wait uh, five to six weeks so that it develops its nice tangy flavor. You can store up to a year for best quality. Um, the bulk per, um, company has lids um, that they call the sure tight lid that ensures um, quality product for up to 18 months. And then inspect each jar before consuming. So I'm always again making sure that lid did not come unsealed during storage and that when I open it, I hear that shoosh um, so that I know it had a nice tight seal. And then you're going to um, <clears throat> If it's bulging, unsealed, don't use the product. If it has um, bubbles or not, you know, color that looks off, um, you know, just don't eat, don't eat it. Um, any signs of spoilage, it could be really unsafe and fatal. So again, do not taste it, say because the um, botulism does not look or taste or smell bad. So do not taste it, um, and then. You should hold it up to eye level. You know, again, looking at the um, the contents for any rising air bubbles or on on natural color. And then you also, when you open it, you want to make sure that liquid doesn't spur out. Um, there isn't any cotton-like mold growth, blue or black or green, on top of the food or the underside of the lid, which are all signs of spoilage. And then if um, you do have spoilage home canned goods, making sure that you discard that um, into um, the garbage so that um, animals or pets can't uh, get in it and, and get sick. And we do not recommend that you compost um, spoiled home canned food. All right, um, we'll finish up here with solving some problems. And then sometimes, you know, things don't turn out the way you hope. So you want to learn from your mistakes and try, try again. Don't give up. Um, a shriveled pickle can happen if for a lot of reasons, overcooking, such as with bread and butter pickles, over processing, or using a vinegar or salt solution that's too strong. Um, that will actually suck up the juice inside the pickle. Uh, hard water can interfere with the formation 
of acid and prevent pickles from curing properly. It can also produce um, dark or discolored pickles. Water with above average calcium content can shrivel the pickles and iron compounds can make them darker than normal. Soft and slippery pickle products are caused by not by not processing properly, um, not removing that blossom end or using older moldy ingredients. If spoilage is evident, do not eat. Uh, prevent these errors by following a research tested recipe by uh, using vinegar, at least 5% acidity, slice at least 1 16th inch off the bottom or blossom end. Uh, again, that helps to remove those natural um, enzymes, use soft water and fresh spices. So these are common things that can happen um, during storage. The garlic in your pickle jar may turn from white um, to pink or blue during storage. A uh, few causes for this include immature or old garlic. So use garlic that has been cured for two to four weeks and less than one year old. A uh, chemical reaction to iron in the water or water pipes that react with um, the pigments in the garlic uh, causing the color change. And then finally, it may be natural color with the variety of garlic you used. And then um, that pickling process just makes that color stand out more, makes it more apparent. A color flower can turn pink, purple, gray, or blue. Um, again, caused by a chemical interaction of pickling liquid of the pickling liquid and the acid in that pickling liquid um, with the pigment, um, pigments of the cauliflower. Pink cauliflower is safe to eat. Um, most often, the cause of a howl pickle, um, we talked about this a little bit, but um, is again, not using fresh cucumbers. They were stored too long before um, processing them. And then lastly, pickles turn pink. Overmature dill um, may cause pickles to turn pink, so um, making sure you're using it when it's green, not brown. Um, but the product is still may, may be safe to eat. Uh, yeast growth may also turn pickles pink and it will make the pickles cloudy or slimy. So if yeast is evident, um, you want to discard those pickles. And then finally, some resources that you can use at, to access after this webinar. Again, to prevent botulism when home canning, use, use and please share only tested recipes and resources. Uh, again, safe canning recipes um, were developed for safety and also for quality as well. Um, USDA has uh, the complete guide to home canning book, but it's also available um, online for free. Um, just search for complete USDA complete home canning guide. Um, and you'll be able to get to that. Uh, National Center for Home Food Preservation website, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, University Extension websites are great resources. Uh, you can search extension.org to find those. Um, well, your website is, is a good resource. Um, I think it's called freshpreserving.com. And then um, they have cookbooks, which I like because it's step-by-step -step, um, recipes with pictures. And again, you want to make sure that um, your recipe source is 1994 or, or newer. The So Easy to Preserve book that's in the photo here is a book of all food preservation processes, resources, and recipes. Um, developed by the University of Georgia, which does conduct the research for um, USDA. And this is the National Center for Home Food Preservation website. Uh, they have on the left hand side, how do I? And if you click on um, pickling, you're going to find all kinds of great resources. Um, if you pick on fruit pickles, we'll give you the recipes for all of the fruit products um, that you can pickle. And again, they have um, recipes on 20, 22 pickle products from artichokes to zucchini. There's a uh, fruit pickles, no sugar added, cantaloupe pickles, um, spiced crab apples, there's pear pickles, watermelon pickles, uh, three bean salad, um, 
at chutneys, and then they also have pickled eggs and pickled um, fish recipes, no sugar added sweet cucumbers, um, no, add, no sugar added pickled uh, beet with Splenda. So there's lots of options and it might give you, if you're just new to it, an idea of what, what you can do. And if you um, are struggling or want more ideas or suggestions, you're trying something out, and um, you can also, you can always call our extension answer line if you live in Minnesota, uh, Iowa, and uh, South Dakota also have um, access to answer line. They have separate numbers. This is our line for people that live in, in, um, in, in, in calling from Minnesota. And you can um, call them about preserving food safety questions or any other household questions. Uh, they are Monday through Friday service though that we're doing our food preservation at night or in the weekends most of the time. But you can leave them a voicemail and they'll get back to you. You can also email them, the email address is there. And on their website, they have a um, lot of frequently asked questions. And then you can also sign up for their blog that has timely and seasonal updates. And then um, check us out what the University of Minnesota has to offer. Uh, we have a lot of information on our um, preserving and preparing page. And we also have videos uh, that you can uh, subscribe to our channel and the webinars will be posted to our YouTube channel under the, preserve it, the preserving um, playlist. And if you're on Twitter, uh, follow us at UMN Food Safety. A lot of my posts are on food preservation. And in summary, you want to use credible resources and methods uh, for both safety and quality. Those resources should be 1994 or newer. Uh, follow the processing times, methods, and recipes exactly. No adding a little of this or a little of that. Um, and then again, do not experiment or alter or produce your Recipe, especially if you're going to home can it. Well, thanks everyone for being here today. Um, if you have a minute, if you please put one thing that you learned today and one action item that you will take as a result of this webinar. If you put that in the chat, I'd appreciate it. And while those are coming in, um, Lisa will take any questions. Um, one that I'll start with that came in was, why did chutney turn dark during storage? And sometimes you'll notice it, um, in the quality of chutney or other home can products that, um, you know, things will change colors on you. And usually uh, the reason for that is a couple of things, but one is that you left too much headspace. Um, or the processing time wasn't, uh, wasn't adequate to draw out all of that extra air. And so then that air act, um, reacts with the food and um, actually then changes the color and will actually change it, the texture and flavor. So if you're not um, used to monitoring your headspace closely, please, please do that. That'll really help with um, color quality and flavor of a product. Lisa, do we have any questions or responses? I have a few questions for you. Uh, the first question uh, is, is there an advantage to use the steam method for pickling? So uh, you're still going to get that um, 212 degrees. So you'll get the same as boiling. So not really an advantage. Some people like it because it's easier to, um, it's not as heavy as a, a can, boiling water canner with all of the water and ingredients in it. Um, so it uses, you know, a little water, not, not the whole water to cover the jars. And how, do, how long do pickled products last? So pickled products, um, if you used safe, <laughs> tested recipes and processing times, uh, you can store them, you know, for best quality, we say 12 to 18 months, but uh, they'll last um, indefinitely if they're stored at the right, right um, conditions. So just, you're going to start um, losing quality, flavor, taste, um, crunchiness, those kind of things over time, the longer you keep it. Um, can you use stevia instead of 
Splenda. Um, again, you want to make sure that you're using a recipe. Um, I know some of those um, uh, manufacturers of artificial flavors. I would check that. I would check their sites for recipes because they do have some according. You know, so they do their research and development. So I would make sure that I'm matching my recipe to the product. Uh, someone asked if you can share the dilly green bean recipe. Ah, yes. So that one is actually off of the National Center for Home Food Preservation website. Um, it's called dilly beans and that, that's the one, that's my go-to. So I will look that up as we keep talking, but it's, uh, it's a basic brine. I should know it by heart because I make it a lot, but I don't. I don't want to give you it um, the wrong recipe. While you're checking on that, I'll give you some of the responses that came in. Sure. Um, someone said that uh, learning that the rubber lids had changed was good to know. Uh, no more lime for me. There are better ways. Someone else said they uh, learned specific acidity to look for. Someone else had said they had never knew that you had to cut off the blossom end and to only use recipes from 1994 or newer. Did not know that hard water can negatively affect my canning. I'm glad I learned this as I start canning at our new house with well water. Yes, good. Well, awesome. I'm, you know, there's so much to learn in food preservation and processing. So um, keep learning because <laughs> I still don't know it all. I learn all the time, but I do have that pickled dean, uh, pickled dean, pickled build bean recipe here. Um, it calls for um, four, to, four pounds of fresh green or yellow beans, uh, eight to 16 uh, heads of fresh dill, eight uh, cloves of garlic. It has a half cup canning or pickling salt, four cups of white vinegar, 5% acidity, four cups uh, water, and then one teaspoon of hot pepper flakes. That's what gives it the spice, spiciness. And the processing time for that um, is, for pints, um, it's 10 minutes for altitudes of 1,001 to 6,000 feet. So it has a fairly um, short processing time. Now, um, the other thing I'll say about that is it only says pints, and I don't think I mentioned that today, but if your recipe calls for pint jars um, and not quarts, sometimes you'll have an option. You can do pints or quarts, so it will have different processing times, but if it only calls for points, pints, then don't use quarts because you won't have, the processing time won't be um, sufficient for that bigger volume. Any other questions or comments, Lisa? Just, um, just a whole lot of comments about that uh, people learned a lot and are gonna, going to give it a try and really enjoyed the presentation. Excellent. And like I said, this will be uh, re was recorded and we will post um, it on our YouTube so you can share with others, our YouTube channel. Um, University of Minnesota Food Safety. So uh, check that out. Uh, we do have some upcoming webinars coming up too. One real quick, someone asked, uh, in one of the slides there was a recipe for spicy mixed vegetables. Wondering where they can get that recipe. Uh, yes, so that one is off of the um, National Center for Home Food Preservation website as well. Sorry, we went a little over time. Um, next time I schedule these, they're going to be an hour and a half. <laughs> we go over, but there's a, there's a lot to cover and I want it to engage you. So thanks for asking questions and sharing what you know in the chat box.